Is this thing on? Hello there. Uh, good morning, afternoon, or evening, uh, wherever you're at. Uh, and uh, welcome to the, the virtual recon village at DEF CON 29. Uh, thanks very much for listening. I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm going to start off with a disclaimer first off, because that's most important. My opinions are not my employers. What you're going to hear are personal opinions. I'm not going to lie to you. All I ask is that you please help me not get fired or sued because I happen to love my job. I also love not getting sued. Thank you for that. Um, I want to start off with a quick shout out. Uh, first to DEF CON 402, that's the local Omaha metropolitan area DEF CON group. Uh, they heard the beta version of this talk. They didn't throw a lot of stuff at me. Very supportive. Thank you for that. Uh, I want to say thanks again to the AppSec Village and SkyTalks, both of whom uh, took a chance on me as a first time village speaker at DC27. And of course, biggest thank you to Recon Village uh, for accepting this talk and for letting me take part. And, uh, and you know, I really appreciate being part of your tradition. Traditions are important. Uh, traditional traditions and internet traditions, like Wednesdays. They're important and it's going to be a recurring topic that we talk about here. But first, I want to go back to winter. Uh, winter of 2020 and 2021. It's a bleak, harsh winter. Especially harsh if you live in Iowa like I do. It's located conveniently in the middle, smack dab of uh, the contiguous United States, and it gets very cold. Uh, nobody wants to go outside and do anything. Um, for some reason, the Red Army Choir sings. But anyway, setting that aside, I'm at work, and I'm uh, down in my office in storage B, and I am taking the pandemic seriously and doing my duty, so I am wearing a mask. And uh, I was probably listening uh, to my favorite kind of music at the same time, too. But anyway, I've, I'm at my computer, and I'm doing some of the mission-critical work that my employer requires of me. So as I'm reading emails, uh, I notice that I get one email that is uh, it's addressed to me, and it's copying a number of other people. One of the addresses it copies doesn't have the right domain name. So uh, my domain name, our, our official one, ends in .gov. Uh, I work at a county government. But in this case, the email was also addressed to somebody at the same exact name, except it ended in .org. Easy mistake to make. Um, the question is, though, where does that email go? I was curious, you know, who got that .org email? It's easy enough to check. I went and looked up MX records. Turns out nobody owned that .org domain. And for about $8, I or anyone else on the Internet could buy that domain name. And, you know, suddenly once you own the domain and you set up the DNS and you can decide where the email goes and where web traffic goes and that sort of thing, uh, you're a hacker. Now uh, you can start receiving emails you weren't supposed to be privy to. And uh, that's something we're going to talk about. So how does somebody type a .org instead of a .gov? I mean, we're a county government, we're a government entity. You'd expect .gov is what people think, but that's not always the case. And again, the answer is because of tradition. Because, because across the United States, uh, local governments, cities and counties, for years and years have... Um, have used .orgs and .coms and .us domains uh, instead of .govs. And uh, it's only recently that local governments have started to move more into the, the .gov domain space. I remember a time before the web was invented when uh, .us was actually a pretty big deal for public institutions and a lot of people were using it. Uh, you know, Americans are stubborn. They didn't standardize it on it uh, like they did in the UK or in Germany and places like that. Anyway, that means that local government entities are using all sorts of different domains, .coms, .nets, .orgs, .us domains, and that makes it tough to know which is the, the real deal. Uh, but then there's the .gov top-level domain. It's a special top-level domain available only to government entities in the United States. How do you get one of these, and why would somebody not use one? Well, getting one, you have to apply to the federal government to get to get your .gov domain. And a couple years ago, I guess it was a little bit too easy to do because uh, Brian Krebs ran an article. There was a fellow who uh, uh, was able to get a .gov domain uh, and all he had to do was download the uh, logos from a town in Rhode Island, put them on letterhead and say, I'm the mayor, give me a .gov and it, uh, it worked out. So that wasn't good. Um, I don't recommend that, by the way. I just want to be clear that uh, forging documents and you know getting a .gov domain when you're not supposed to, that's fraud or forgery, that's illegal stuff. Don't do crime, stay in school, kids. Uh, but back then, the .gov registry was run by GSA. If you've, ever, if you've ever worked for, with, or in 
the U.S. federal government. You probably had dealings with, with GSA, and they had a whole bunch of different rules, um, and they did do work to try to uh, verify those domains, but obviously some slipped through. Uh, nowadays, the .gov registry is run under CISA. It was moved over. It was kind of part of the fallout from the 2016-2020 elections, um, and now it's free to get a .gov domain. It's free for local governments to register those. It used to be a $400 a year fee. That doesn't seem like very much, and it's not if you're in the federal government, but if you are a uh, you know town of 500 or 1,000 people or something, a $400 expenditure is actually a pretty big expenditure. It's free now. They they want you to go to it um, in part for election security, but also just to make it clear that you are a government entity. And so local governments are moving in droves to .gov domains, and there are good reasons for doing that. Uh, the .gov domain carries a certain cachet. When you see it, you know it's got to be a government entity because no one else should be able to get one. Uh, it's, it's trusted more. Whether that's the right way to do it or not, uh, employees and citizens trust it. And yet there are still a lot of governments out there that use .coms, .nets, .orgs, and .us domains. And why do they do that? Again, it's tradition. It's as old as Star Wars themed weddings. Uh, the tradition, I mean, look at Multnomah County in Oregon. Uh, they've been using a .us domain for 20 years. So their citizens and employees know to go there. That's the place they go to. Uh, Syracuse in, in New York. Uh, that city has a .NET domain. A little bit unusual, but uh, they've been using it for a number of years as well. We're going to talk about using lookalike domains, and specifically uh, using impersonations of .gov domains and .us and .org, and whatever local governments are using, because it's it's dangerous, and also because uh, you know it works. And so those of you who are red teamers for a living, you, you probably are hearing this and you think this isn't super advanced and you are right, it's not, but it is effective. Um, and it's a form of typo squatting. So I'm sure everyone knows what typo squatting is. You type Facebook wrong or Gmail wrong, you end up at the wrong site. I hope you don't get you know, loaded down with malware when that happens. Uh, there's a term cyber squatting that's used now to cover typo squatting and other types of uh, lookalike domains and things like that. It sounds cooler because it has the word cyber in it, plus when you put it in your title, it doubles your pay. So that's good. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about doppelganger domains. And so they're lookalike domains, imposter domains, uh, that are missing a dot. Pretty easy to do, an easy mistake for somebody to make. Um, but we can also, you know, that's doppelganger is a German term. We can also go back to uh, Greek because there are some lovely things you can do to set up uh, lookalike domains uh, using uh, techniques like homophones. Those are words that are spelled differently but sound the same. You can trick users that way. Um, everyone loves Unicode. I'm sure you do. Um, and dealing with, uh, yeah, dealing with that. Unicode offers a whole bunch of different alphabets, and there are alphabets like Cyrillic that have letters that look similar to the Latin ones, but aren't the same, and they make lovely, lovely imposter domains. Uh, bit squatting. This one, you may have read, there's a paper out recently on this and some amazing stuff, and basically every now and again a computer accidentally changes a 1 to a 0. Apparently it's done by space rays and possibly aliens are behind it. Whatever it is, it's really, really cool. We don't need any of that. We have very simple, very simple attacks to do just by substituting .org or .com for .gov. And once you can get someone to go to your lookalike domain, you control what their experience is. You control what website they go to for real, and uh, you control where email goes. So that's all we need. All we need to do is rely on uh, human nature. And human nature says that uh, somebody is going to, who's been used to typing .org for 20 years, is going to keep typing .org even when a government switches to .gov. Why do I care about this? Why am I, I talking to you about this today? Well, I've worked in county government uh, for about 20 years. And, you know, when I started, I actually had a lot more hair and probably a little bit more sanity. And uh, I, I'm still going strong, but I care about the security of our local governments. And uh, I started out in our county's IT department. I spent 15 years there. Uh, during the last eight years, I, I, during, by day I was a mild-mannered IT professional, and by night I fought crime as a reserve deputy in our sheriff's office. And I started doing digital forensics that way. Um, and and I, I guess I, I don't really have a CV slide, but uh, my favorite accomplishment is that I think I am federally considered a porn expert because I was at a federal trial once testifying and uh, the defense attorney came up and 
I was ready to, uh, to uh, was ready to examine me, and uh, in his line of questioning, he started off, Deputy Kava, you're an expert in pornography. And there was this pause, and it was empty, and so I just said, thank you. And a stenographer typed it down, it went into the transcript, and now I think federally I am recognized as a porn expert, so there's that. Um, I, I've been on the... I've been on our state's Internet Crimes Against Children task force since 2009. And so when I explain it to students, I tell them that, you know, we go after bad guys on the Internet who go after kids. So, you know, we're the good guys, Marty, for those of you of a certain age. Um, I am a hacker and I carry a badge. And I don't think those things are mutually exclusive. In fact, I think we need more of that. I think we need more people who subscribe to the hacker ethos, who, who, uh, who believe in transparency, uh, who believe in privacy, uh, who believe in you know, judging people by who they are, not by you know, who their parents were, or where they came from, what they look like. I think we need more of that in law enforcement. Um, and I, I want to just, so you've got something hopeful, hopeful message to come out of this. I want to let you know that there are literally dozens of us out there. And we are infiltrating law enforcement all over the United States and elsewhere. So uh, I'm hoping that we can affect some sort of change. Uh, but my job, uh, and I work in a sheriff's office, is uh, investigating cybercrime. And, and that can mean, you know, looking into Facebook accounts. That means uh, doing forensic examination. So I also, uh, you know, will dump cell phones. I look at computers, that sort of thing. I do all those. And then I also have a cybersecurity role. And I've had that kind of role ever since my days in IT. We have, at the local government level, the same kind of challenges that you have at any organization. We have a domain to protect, and uh, we want to do that. And uh, that also means looking out for our you know, actual domain names. So I work for a place called Pottawatomie County. There'll be a spelling test later on, so don't worry about it for now. But nobody, <laughs> our citizens can hardly spell it. And so we don't use that name spelled out. We, uh, for years and years, about almost 20 years, uh, used potcounty.com with two T's as our do as our domain name. Uh, when I was in IT, I registered the one T variant just to uh, make sure that nobody could grab that away from us. Before it was cool and before it was free, we switched over to a .gov domain. And back then, I didn't think I didn't think to register the .com or .org that go along with that. Um, so I missed out on an opportunity there. Which brings me back to this email. This email that's going nowhere. It's going to a .org that doesn't exist. Um, I started looking into it, and then I thought, well, I wonder where else in the state of Iowa this could be happening, because I you know, work with other counties and so on. There are 98 other counties in the state of Iowa, and it turns out a lot of them had uh, this potential vulnerability. They had domains available that were very similar to their real domain. And as I looked at those, um, you know, I, I got to thinking, state of Iowa is not very big. It's not a, not a very populous place. There have got to be bigger fish in the sea. There's got to be uh, you know bigger targets out there. And where do you find them? Well, thankfully, the uh, some total of human knowledge is now out on the internet under wikipedia.org. So you can find them there. There's a list of cities and counties listed by uh, their populations. And so if you want to find the most populous ones, the best, biggest targets to look at, that's one way to do it. And that led to an experiment that led to uh, some research. I decided I, I want to find out what other counties are out there, what other cities are out there that could fall victim to this sort of thing. And what can we do about it? Like all of life's hardest problems, this one was solved with Perl. Uh, and I wrote some Perl code to uh, go out to Wikipedia, scrape that list of most populous counties and cities, and then go a level deeper and find the websites for them out of the individual articles. There's probably an API for it, but I was too lazy to learn it, so I just did it with regexes. Uh, put that into a database, did some DNS queries, did some Whois queries, figured out which of those domains were available, and made a nice list of targets. And I didn't do anything super fancy. There's no, uh, you know, rays from space involved here. If they had a .gov, I looked at the .com and .org that were similar. If they had a .us, same thing. And as I was doing this, I thought, why limit ourselves to, uh, to the United States? I mean, and every other country has governments too. And uh, what about the UK? We've got our special relationship with them. They should like us. They haven't invaded us in 207 years. That things were going really well. I thought it was about time to shake things up. Um, so I looked at gov.uk to see what else was available for them. Um, that's their equivalent to our .gov domain. Yada, yada, yada. Um, I ended up with 42 look-alike domains that looked like local governments uh, from here and abroad. And uh, 
basically if they had a dot gov i looked for the similar comms or orgs if they had a dot us i looked for doppelganger opportunities um we in my county and this is that's how you spell it uh have one of these official co dot county name dot state dot us domains and those are rife for um for doppelganger attacks too. drop that dot out of there so i looked at some of those and gov.uk as i mentioned it's their equivalent to our dot gov and people will miss that last dot before the gov and so i registered a couple of those and this isn't something limited just to you know the uk and the us uh, there are domains that are uh, parked or domains that are available for countries all over the world and uh, one interesting thing that came out of this was i found out that the uk actually has a safety net in place to protect to prevent this sort of thing from happening something we don't have in the us um, they have red they have a registrar with regulations that say that you cannot register a domain if you're going to use it for phishing or illegal stuff i mean it's it, it's a good idea and they didn't actually let me register the domain at first they said this looks hinky and they uh, uh sent me a, a, a nasty gram by email and asked what the heck i was up to i told them I'm doing some research i promise i'm not doing anything bad if you can't give me the domain no big deal um the appeal went up i assumed at the highest levels of government and uh it, it went through i was able to actually register the domains i wanted so somehow i got away with it uh, just barely and so no international incident there good thing let's get back to the experiment so the goals of the experiment, we're going to do something good. We're going to try to take some of these domains out of circulation so that an attacker can't use them. We're also going to try to increase awareness. That's actually part of what this talk is about. Uh, I've got these 42 lookalike domains ready to go. So I set them up to redirect their web traffic to the real site that, they're, that, they're, that they look like, to the actual government sites. Just as a 302, it doesn't say that you know our lookalike is the actual site. We just redirect them to the real one. Um, also started bouncing emails so i uh, set up mx record and anybody who emails one of these lookalike domains they immediately get a bounce message back so we're looking at the email uh, for research purposes to figure out you know how bad this problem could be but we're also telling them this is not the right address and usually after the second or third try they they figure that out um, there at no point did we do anything to try to entice people to use these lookalike domains. So at no point was I taking a domain and putting it out there on Google or whatever and saying, this is the official one. Anything that came in was unsolicited. And I decided to take, you know, I used the prime directive and decided not to interfere with anything that happened here. Obviously, if I saw an email that said, you know, somebody was in immediate danger, I would have taken action right away, but that never came up, thankfully, so no problem. This sounds kind of sleazy. People, you know, registering domains that look like someone else's domain, there ought to be a law, right? Uh, and it turns out there is. Since 1999, there's the Anti-Cyber Squatting Consumer Protection Act. And it's, uh, it's not criminal, so you're not going to go to jail for it, but it gives uh, companies a way to sue if somebody tries to water down their trademark by registering something or just you know squats on one of their names. Uh, we're not going to run afoul of that because we are not going after, first off, anything in private, private sector or you know, private industry. Uh, but second, our motivations are good. We're not doing anything wrong. Um, here's the intent. We want to deny the best real estate to the baddies. We want to bounce emails to make it obvious to anyone who sends an email that they got the wrong address so that they fix their stuff. Um, and then we want to, at the end of this, and this is actually in progress now, give these domains away to the, the potential victims that could use them. So if, uh, you know, if there was a county somewhere and, a, and one of their domains is one of these 42 where, where there's a lookalike, wanted to give them the domain, and I've done that now with seven or eight counties so far. The beauty of this kind of attack, of this, these lookalike domains, uh, there's a lot going for it. First off, it's difficult to detect. There are companies you can pay to go look for these things, or you can buy feeds, you know, newly registered domains, but it's, it's kind of tricky. And you got to remember that uh, there are 3,000 counties in the United States, you know, give or take, and some of them don't even have IT departments. They've got an auditor's clerk or whatever that's doing their stuff, and so they aren't going to be able to keep an eye out for this. It can be very silent. If you're just passively accepting email and accepting web traffic, nobody may even you know, see that this is happening. You can also do uh, meddling with the traffic. You can do a man-in-the-middle attack. If somebody is visiting the wrong website, you can proxy them to the right one, inject some JavaScript or whatever you want to do. There's dangerous stuff that can happen. There's a ton of intel that you can get on this. If you're a red teamer or an actual attacker, if you are watching the email traffic, if you end up in one of these email chains where you're CC'd, 
you can you can jump right into it. You could reply and it's going to have the right thread ID. It's going to look right. Or you can sit back and just collect the data. You can build a beautiful dossier on somebody that you are after a target because you're going to you're going to see their actual email signature, you're going to get phone numbers, you're going to know who they're talking to, what business they're doing. I mean, there's tons of intel there. And you can use all that for phishing. And you'll even know, you know, what the best topics are and you may know what a banner is going to look like if you're going to hit one of those external email banners. The lifespan on this thing could be indefinite because if you're not outright breaking the law or it can't be proven that you are, then you can just sit there silently with that domain for years and years and there may not be anything somebody can do. So 42 domains, they're set up. First few days, already there were results and I want to share those with you. Uh, instant results, the, one of the very first emails that I saw come across was from a lawyer and it had a disclaimer at the end that said email is not secure. A little bit of an understatement. And then there were the secure emails. So you've seen the Zix emails and Office 365 and Virtru. Those were coming in. And how do you authenticate yourself? You click the link and say, I own this email. They send you a code and you're in the email. So not very secure in that case. Then there were the Zoom invites. Zoom invite after Zoom invite. There were just so many of them. You probably, I know everybody zoomed out after 2020, 2021 here, but um, Anyway, there were a ton of those. If you wanted to bomb a meeting, it wouldn't be too hard to do. Um, invoices, financial information. Sometimes there's financial information on the documents that we're coming across. Sometimes it's just a useful invoice. Again, if you wanted to send a false invoice to someone, you know exactly what it should look like and who it should go to. Uh, people, citizens, are sending in their paperwork. They're sending in their vehicle registration and stuff like that, trying to get it to the Department of Motor Vehicles. And some of there were just weird off the you know off the wall stuff you wouldn't have expected like um notifications about new toxicology reports from autopsies that just started pouring in because they were automated uh oh and and, and a coupon for subway so there's that is anybody doing this it was a question that comes up if you're looking at this stuff you're thinking wow an attacker could actually do this who who's actually doing this well i've got an example and i don't have to go very far because it's actually our county seat Council Bluffs, Iowa is the seat of Pottawatomie County. It's where I live. It's where I work. And uh, they have a website. It's a .gov. They've been on a .gov, .gov for a number of years. But somebody else has the .com. Who has the .com? Um, and why do they have it? What are they doing with it? Well, if you look it up, uh, I looked up the name servers, and you can see the real one uses a, a company called Civic Plus. That makes sense. Uh, the fake one, the .com, uses KeystonePack.com. And the servers are Bernie and Hillary, which is interesting, interesting pairing too. But what does that mean? Um, well, if you look up keystonepack.com, you'll find out that it, it resolves the same IP address. They both have they both have MX records, so they can receive mail. Uh, they must be the same company. If you look up that IP, you'll find that it's hosted out of New York. Um, and if you go to the websites, you just get this placeholder park domain kind of thing. It just says this is whatever the domain name is. Uh, keystonepack.com, however is very similar to keystonepack.org, which is a real political website. So it sounds like their parking domains uh, look alike domains for political or government uh, agencies. Um, dig a little deeper, make an SMTP connection, and you can get uh, another domain out, bigfission.com. You dig into that, and it turns out to be uh, a remailer uh, in the Netherlands that's been operating since the 90s. So. A little bit of a rabbit hole there, and that's as far as we'll go down it, but somebody is using that .com, and they could be receiving email because they've got MX records going. I noticed at the time, uh, when I was looking into that, that nobody had the .org, so I did register that and did hand it over to the City of Council Bluffs so that they can hang on to it for safekeeping. They may never get that .com back, but now they, they've got the .org. What about states? Our state, state of Iowa. Iowa.gov is their official domain. They have lots of subdomains in there, including for counties. Um, who has Iowa.com? It's parked. Somebody wants $50,000 for it. At any point, they could register or they could put up MX records and start receiving emails from people type .com instead of .gov. Who has the .org? This guy named Jan. He's had it since the 90s. In fact, his website doesn't seem to have changed too much since the 90s, which is cool. But anyway, if he wanted to, he could start publishing MX records and stealing emails the same way uh, anyone else could. Scary stuff. So we're getting emails, we're, we're, we're getting uh, hits to uh, these lookalike websites. Uh, what are the results? Is there anything useful? Well, I told you a little bit about things seen in the first three days, but there were even weirder, more cringeworthy things coming after that. Um, after a while, 
I started seeing, it looked like a driver's license every day or two. People are sending their uh, pictures of their driver's license in. There were all those invoices again and bills and quotes and all sorts of lovely financial information, good for fraud use. Uh, over, th over 200 PDF documents attached to emails that came in. There were over 170 photos that were sent in, including those driver's licenses. Um, just here's a quick chart on DNS, but basically there were over 4,000 uh, queries against these 42 domains every day. Um, web traffic, over 1,300 hits every day. A lot of those are automated, but some of them are people that hit the wrong domain and you can control where they go. Uh, ended up over almost four month period, getting 2,500 emails. That's over 23 a day to these 42 domains. You've got mail. And, and what if I told you there was some really scary stuff in there? Well, you'd believe it. I mean, I assume from what you've seen so far, there was one email that came in that had the trifecta, not just a driver's license, but also social security card and a certificate of birth, uh, all in one email. So that was good. There's a largest, uh, largish uh, city in California that has a credit card form they use for permitting, and they said, go ahead and email it to us with your CBV2 and everything. So that was cool. Um, ended up uh, getting automated notifications uh, like this one. Uh, whenever uh, there's a, a, a city that was buying water from a neighbor and every time that they uh, did that their ICS system or whatever would trigger this and you would get a receipt so that was kind of interesting to read or this wire transfer notice uh, coming from a, a pretty big city in the Midwest every time they did a wire transfer I was getting uh, information about it thankfully not everything was so scary uh, in fact I think the majority of the emails were people trying to get out of jury service which makes some sense um, there was a little bit of police intelligence involved because uh, a cop at some time had gotten signed up on a list serve with the wrong address and now for years even though the email wasn't going anywhere till the domain was registered uh, they were getting bulletins with all the latest you know criminal information in there so uh, passwords people uh, signing up their uh, colleagues or their workers uh, for different websites they put the wrong address in and you get their initial password also, some two-factor action. I'm seeing codes coming in when people are trying to log into their you know, Google accounts or Apple accounts. Uh, too long, didn't read. Summary here. This attack is cheap. It's simple. It's hard to stop once it starts, and it works. It works, and it doesn't require a lot in terms of uh, you know, capabilities. Uh, how do we help with this? Well, like I said, registering the domains is good. Getting the word out there and getting awareness up is good too. And so I, I gave a talk to uh, Iowa counties uh, and told them about this. I, I put some other things out to uh, national counties group and I set up a website. I made this website called imposter.domains. And if you go there, you can do a search for any domain name you want. Um, and you can go do this now. And it will give you just a couple of hints as to uh, what some similar domain names might look like and tell you whether they're taken or not and there's uh, frequently asked questions that explains how all this stuff works so if somebody's not familiar with domains that works there's all there's even a nerd mode you can turn on and you can see a little bit of dns information uh, for these domains too if you want to so feel free to check it out imposter.domains um, if you spell with an er by mistake that also works because it's a look like domain right uh, anyway the results of this are the concept's confirmed. This attack works. Everybody knew you could do it. It's not a surprise. It's nothing new. But I'm just telling you that uh, from a proof of concept, it's 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 uh, feasible. It works. Uh, the awareness is expanded. We between talks and that site, trying to get the word out so that all these local governments that are uh, now moving to .govs make sure that they protect themselves. And we're transferring domains, getting them out to the individuals who could use them, so that we make sure they never go back into circulation. And that is it. That's all the information I had to share with you. Now you know it's half the battle. Thanks so much for listening. If you've got questions, there's going to be Q&A on uh, DEF CON's Discord. The link's down there. If you uh, need to get in there, you're probably already logged in. Thank you for that. Um, and that is it. If you want to reach out, my website with my contact info is forensic.coffee. And I uh, really appreciate you listening. And thanks so much, Recon Village, for uh, giving me a chance to take part.